Hey guys, so in this one, we're going to be playing around with Boolean Cleanup. Now, a lot of you have watched other YouTube videos. You've probably seen an add-on called Mesh Machine. It has a Boolean Cleanup tool and another little feature called Offset Cut. We're going to play with that first. I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to go move on from that and do things manually if you don't have that add-on. It is a paid add-on, unfortunately, but um, we're going to go ahead and get into it. All right, so first up, um, there's a free add-on called Machine Tools. Check that out. That's free. Why not? And if you install that add-on, uh, you can actually create a quad sphere by pressing shift they create a quad sphere. Just so you know, it's quite useful. Now, um, you can also change the subdivision counts here if you needed to. So lower it, right? Something like that. We're going to leave it high for just a second. I'm going to press shift A and create a cylinder. Okay, so here's a cylinder. Cool. Go to side view while orbiting, hit Alt, rotate, move. We're going to grab this one, then this one. Control shift B. This is bull tools. You can enable this. It comes with Blender. Just go to Edit Preferences Add-ons, Enable Bull Tools. And when you hit Control Shift B now, you can do um, if you select this, then this. Control Shift B. Brush Boolean Difference. Okay. You don't have to have like box cutter or hard ops or not necessarily, uh, but it does use exact. Change it to fast if possible. Usually that works a little bit better, but we're going to use exact in this one uh, just to get started. Now, uh, I'm going to duplicate the base mesh here. Right click it. I click again, convert to a mesh. That way we have a duplicate that's been collapsed. There's no Boolean modifier on it. All right, now let's use the add-on, all right? So mesh machine add-on, it's like $40 or something, I think, or $30 if you find it on sale. Um, click an edge, alt click it, and then add-on will let you go ahead and like the edge like so. And if you hit Y, you can use the Boolean cleanup feature, right? And it's quite simple, but take note of the cylinder shape on the inside there. If we just start cranking this out to the right, it never changes. So if you were to do something like merge by distance, hitting M, merge by distance, you'll notice it starts to collapse. So it's quite a bit different, and there's no way to replicate this as far as I'm aware inside of um, Vanilla Blender for the most part. So um, Boolean Cleanup tool, quite useful. You should probably use this. Also, the offset cut feature and the add-on preferences, you have to enable this. But offset cut will do this number where it eats away at the geo surrounding uh, that edge. Uh, something important here to, to remember, though, is you want to try to match the cylinder sides as much as possible. Uh, so you can, you know, click this little uh, factor section and hold down shift. And just try to get it matched up here. It's going to save you some troubles. Okay? Generally speaking, it will. Like right there. Yep. Control B and you can bevel. Now swivel up if you need to. Cool. Shade auto smooth. And the reason I wanted to point that out is because right here, this edge, right? It's close enough that you can now grab an edge all the way around. You can run Boolean cleanup again. You'd be able to collapse these all back into each other. That's going to give you loops in here. Okay. That's That's kind of important. That's something you need to think about. On the outside, however, we have a bunch of extra stuff going on. Uh, generally speaking, you'll see there's still little tiny artifacts all over the place. So you might want to run Boolean Cleanup out here again as well. Just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy with it. Okay? And usually that'll work out quite well, potentially. Um, if you want to go a little bit further, you can always do that as well. You can see some things just don't merge. They simply they aren't doing it yet, so you can run it a couple times perhaps. Uh, you can try mouse wheel and up or down, and that's going to kind of flip the directions that these things work. But a lot of times you're going to find that uh, you still just need to kind of merge things manually sometimes. And it can happen. So, uh, But overall, there's a lot less to deal with, right? Very quick. Um, and unfortunately, the side effect of using this tool is that, well, for Boolean InGon, it's great, but now there's a lot of triangles and stuff going on. Um, I don't know if this would subdivide so well. So, that's not really the point of the, the tool to work with subdivision, but um, it could probably potentially help. Clean this up manually. You might be able to get a subdivide. Some things you just don't want to get rid of, like that one. These probably want to merge. But yeah, if you really had to, you just go back through and run building clean up one more time, maybe. See if that helps out. Okay. Let's see what happens here. If I grab the middle, E, S, S, center, bam. Okay. And um, let's just shade it smooth and hit Control 2. See if it subdivides. And you can see, well, 
not so much these e poles down here didn't seem to do too well with it, and you'd still have to merge around. There is kind of get to work a little bit better, which is uh, unfortunate, but overall, for a Boolean end gun, this is going to be a pretty, pretty phenomenal result. It actually works better with more polygons or faces, by the way. Because as they get smaller and smaller, these little artifacts get harder and harder to see. So, little tiny uh, shading differences. You can also try pressing GG twice, sliding back a little bit. And spacing some of this stuff out a little bit can help quite a bit as well. Like this little triangle here. You might not want that like that necessarily. Okay. Or like a triangle like that at all. You might just control exit and make it a uh, done instead. Might help out. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Use this in combo. Mesh machines obviously pay it out on. Use it in combo with machine tools. Machine tools has a surface slide feature under the modes pie, which is when you hit tab, a little modes pie pops up. Um, I have it on quick favorites as like a workaround I do. But when you turn that thing on, this gives you an opportunity to also try adjusting some things like a little bit of the spacing. Potentially. May not always work out too well, but you can try using it in combo with that as well. See if it works out for you, all right? So that's going to be one way you can clean things up. Now, how would you do this if you didn't have machine tools? Or, excuse me, didn't have mesh machine, right? Not a lot of good ways of really cleaning this up, per se. You'd end up with something like this, and you'd say, oh, no, I got to go around and do all of these. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. It's even more of a problem if this wasn't just a simple cylinder, right? But if it's a simple cylinder, because this is kind of a flat area around here, it's not too bad. What you do is you select here at the back, hit Control Number Pad Plus, so you select all the way to the front, right? And uh, once you do that, I'm going to hit M and Merge by Distance real quick. And the goal here with the Merge by Distance is just to bump it up a little bit, so that we get rid of anything that's super close to each other, okay? And it will start to merge it together. Now I can hit Control X. I'm going to dissolve it, okay? dissolve the vertices as well. Now watch what happens. All these little vertices that are in between all these little uh, faces here, they'll go away. Do this. Okay. So now when we look at the vertices, there's still stuff to clean up, but it's much, much less. And you might do some things like merge at center. Okay. Leave things alone as well. You don't always have to get rid of it. Okay. But sometimes you might want to merge at last. So press M, merge at last. Things like this we can dissolve. Don't need those. This one we might merge at center. We're just starting to try to create like even spacing between these different uh, little sections here. So that's all that's really going on. You can create n-gons if you want, or you can back things up maybe a little and create a triangle by pressing J and do vertices. Boom. Things like that can be useful. But there is quite a bit over here to deal with. You can see right now. Try to make it easy though. Don't, don't get too caught up on it. Don't need it. Dissolve it. If uh, you can merge it, merge it. I think I'm going to go this way with this. I don't know. I'll pull that out to my cut from there, I think. It's better sometimes not to even create the triangle like that. Better to have a big one like that, right? Um, but ultimately, we're almost done with this. I think I'm going to leave those ones alone. I can also use the cursor selector, hit and see. Merge at last, merge at center. I'm using machine tools to do these quick merges. Smart face, smart edge, smart vert, and all that fun stuff. But um, you can certainly just press M every time if you had to. The shortcuts help a lot, though. Solve that one. Merge those at center. Merge those at center. Yeah, it's cleaned up, guys. I mean, it's, it doesn't really take that long once you get used to using those hotkeys, right? A lot, it's a lot quicker. And so I can inset this, extrude it. Should look awfully familiar right about now, right? You can bevel this edge here. Something like right there, maybe. Get it auto smooth. But there we go. Something like that. What if we wanted this to be rounded? Well, the shading there might still be pretty rough. It's not always going to give you the best results here. Uh, you could try doing a really small bevel, maybe, like right on this edge, if possible. Let's go back a sec. Easier to select it this way. 
Um, and then Alt Shift. Whoop, sorry. Do a boundary selected. Selection. Select uh, loops. Boundary loop. There you go. Alt Shift click. You can deselect that one. Control Shift or excuse me. Control B. We can bevel here. Should be able to bevel this out. Notice some of these aren't merged yet. So press A M. Merge by distance. We'll do that again real quick. All right. And now we'll bevel. And that'll kind of push those off. And your mouse will up once. A little bevel there. That'll help keep that shading in check there on that edge. Okay, just a little bit. Just learning to model a little bit like this, playing playing around with your tools, learning them inside and out, helps a lot, like a lot. Because we can still do this relatively fast. It's definitely not maybe as quick, but you can see we didn't get perfect results over here, and we didn't get perfect results over here necessarily. We still have ingons and triangles and stuff. Uh, this one, however should in general uh, go through this and dice it up a little bit more try to change some things around perhaps i think that could technically be a quad might, might want to try some things like that i don't know all kinds of stuff you can do over here using the knife tool and all that but in general if i es 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 or press one or smart for and merge it uh, this if i hit control two Oops, what happened here? Turn on subdivision off in edit mode real quick. I didn't add a loop cut down here or a loop cut up here. The control R, add loop cuts. Why is this center going crazy? It shouldn't have been that crazy. Inset. Set, inset, merge at center. Ooh, we got a nice banding effect. That's kind of interesting. I didn't think it would do that, but it did. All right, so here's why it's doing that, I'm pretty sure. First of all, this should be flat. If I flatten it, I inset, 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 and it still does that, it's telling me something else. No, it wasn't flat, okay? So let's take all of this out real quick. So control number pad plus, select all the way out. Right up to this edge right here. Delete all that. So we can select this area here, okay? It's an open edge. You should be able to alt-click it now. E S Loop tools, flatten. Okay, we're going to do loop tools again and do spacing. Curious how off they are on spacing. I don't think it was that bad. You can also try loop tools circle. And that'll also flatten it, by the way. And change the uh, rotational value here a little bit. You see what's going on. So, we can get a perfect circle here in the center if we needed to, because you can see as we move things around, it shifts it a little bit. Um, but I still think it looks worse for some reason. So I'm not going to do that. Let's instead do this to here. Press E. Oh, sorry. Press F, E, E, S, E, S. This should be flattened in here, hopefully. Or do that center. Aid Smith. All right, I don't think that's too bad. Now, you can do both of these at the same time, perhaps. Flat there. So, do you need machine tool, or excuse me, mesh machine? Machine tools, I think you need, personally. But do you need mesh machine? Barely. It is a creature comfort, I think. Like, it's really got a couple features I use that I really like. But other than that, I don't use like half of them. So, not that a. I shouldn't probably use them more. It's just I just I do a lot of things with subdivisions. I'm constantly manually modifying things anyways. This subdivides, right? Most part. Triangles though are kind of killer sometimes. So be careful with those. Sometimes you can dissolve them and turn them into um ingons. Simple ingons anyways, because you can see what's going on here when it subdivides. Turn off optimal display. It's an e-pole and an in-pole, kind of a combo with each other. Um, but So like one pinches, one pulls, and they kind of counteract each other a little bit. It's kind of nice, but not always required. You can also turn on surface slide here, kind of pull things around. That helps out. You can like stretch a triangle out potentially a little bit. Won't be perfect, though. Not going to be a perfect result. To do this with perfect subdivision, you're better starting off with a low resolution. 
creating the uh, the cut for the front, and then up resin after that after the fags. So you'll have perfect quads all the way around. Kind of hard to get this off the bit, um, convert it over necessarily, but yeah. Anyway, so that's that's kind of what's going on here. Got to be an edit mode. All right, turn surface slide off, and um, yeah, so that's that. Let's talk about other ones real quick, pulling clean up some things that maybe they're like um, really complicated. Let's say like uh, do a cube, pull it out, pull that, pull that down, grab here, scale it. Subdivide a few times. Let's see if we can't make that a little bit more interesting looking, perhaps. Okay, something like that. Apply it, shade it auto smooth or shade it smooth, anyways. Okay, so let's say you had a cube in here. Right? Or some kind of really wild shape. Like you did one of these numbers like this. And maybe this thing was even beveled on top of it. The whole thing was beveled. Put the arc on the outer meter real quick. I don't know if that is a matter on this. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Control Alt Shift click here and then bevel. Pull that down. I feel like it should be the other R Z hold control. Do a uh, 90 degree. Trying to give it some really interesting stuff here. Scale it down a little bit. And then, then. Okay, we're gonna do the Boolean from this. I'm gonna duplicate it, convert it to a mesh. In case I mess up, that way we can go back and work with it. But, all right. This is, not actually that complicated a one, but you can see here also, this is another great example of where like that Boolean cleanup tool actually comes into play. Even things like this, you can use it on it. Uh, you just wanna make sure you have the whole edge selected where it needs to be. Boolean cleanup, bam, and you see, you can start to fix it pretty quickly. Not too bad. You can even use offset cut on things like this. Bevel. Cool, right? Fast, it's efficient. Eight hours move. It still has some little things you gotta maybe touch up here, for example. I think I would run that into that one somehow, actually. That could cause a little bit of an issue, perhaps, but you'll have to play with it and see what you can get going, anyway. It might work out better in some sense. This one might be better coming down. Right? So, yeah, perfect result? No, not really, but not too bad either, huh? Clean these ones up. Not bad at all, right? Cool. Very fast, very efficient. So do think about getting the add-on. Now, let's do that again. Let's do it without it, though. Convert it to a mesh. Duplicate. So I'm going to take all of this area. This is going to be kind of a hard selection because there's like a real narrow edge over here. Oh no, there's maybe there's not. Yeah, I think there is. Look. Uh, we're going to ignore it. Using the cursor selector, so hit C. Uh, left click to use the cursor selector, but middle click to get rid of selections and right click to cancel. So that out of the way, we can go ahead and do an M, merge by distance. Just bump it up one, if anything else goes away, nothing. So that's pretty good. We might wanna do some manual cleanups too, like pushing things like that over there. Could be useful. I still merge these at center here. Notice I'm doing these ones right now. I don't wanna mess around with them later on. I think I'd rather just do them right now. Work these kind of things out. We can't do 
the trick we did before. It doesn't work that way now. It's not like we can just control X this and then dissolve vertices because then we lose everything in the middle here, right? Um, unless you do like maybe a duplicate and then maybe separate it, they have a backup. That, that might be useful. I'm going to hide it. Try that. We'll see what happens. So if we do Control X, all vertices here, that's going to simplify everything. Sometimes it gets rid of a little bit too much, perhaps. Uh, the trick with that is when it happens, when it delete everything. Take the well before before you even delete it, you don't have to. Um, this edge subdivide it. So right click subdivide. And you're gonna have to move it back into position where it goes. You need surface slot, yes, for that one. That's that one's gonna be hard to do without that. Well, these converge at center, perhaps. That merge that one up to there. Why not? I mean, you know what? No, I don't have to do that. That one's fine the way it is. This one got rid of its vertex for some reason. All right, so we'll leave those alone. Delete that now. Turn surface slide off. Remember, I had a duplicate of that face in the middle. I'm going to hit Alt-H to bring it back. Okay, go into edit mode with this. You can forward slash to isolate it if you want. Generally, the idea here is just to go through and make sure um, you have the same vertices that you have on the other piece. If you can't really tell, just join them anyways. A, M, merge by distance. It should be pretty close to identical. Yeah. So, quite a bit of little manual cleanup there, huh? Uh, interestingly enough, this gives us a place to push back to, so it has the exact same shape. Nice. But can we actually, well, this one, subdivide that. But can we actually do like a, the edge like the other one? Not really. That's the thing. There's a little caveat to this, right? It is what it is. But. Grab the faces here. We're getting there. Giving you ideas, hopefully, on what you can do and play around with. Um, I don't always get it right the first time I go through something, so if you fail on the first time, don't worry about it. It's okay. So here's a little trick with this one. If you were to, say, collapse these all the way in, can't collapse all of them, unfortunately, but if you were to collapse most of them, it helps, generally speaking, if possible. Because what I want to do, I want to use an outset as much as possible. Get another edge going. But it's a little hard to do sometimes with weird angled stuff like this. So if I press I to do an inset. I think we're all aware of this one. Um, we could go in this direction with it. Uh, but we can also press O to do an outset, maybe. Sometimes you can create a little bit of more spacing in this direction by doing this. Unfortunately, a bunch of stuff's kind of like overlapping each other. It makes it hard to work with. But um, you can, in fact, start merging things out, potentially. Okay? And, but you'll have to go through and kind of clean all this up. That's what I'm getting at. So you can create a pretty nice little border here. These ones didn't, don't look like this. That one did. Actually, let's control Z back a sec. I'm just going to leave it like that. No. I have kind of a bad habit where I like to make everything quads. It's just a, a thing. Pretty sure a lot of people have that as a bad habit now. Because of me, I'm sure. Or maybe they always had the, the habit. I was just merging things out like that can be useful as well. All right. More or less, what's going to happen is as you go through and you clean things up, fill in the holes, right? Find things that maybe you can dissolve like this thing. Oh, we might have. I've cut down here. Huh, what is going on with this? Get it all. Shade auto smooth. Okay. Shaded flat, I guess. 
I dissolve that, obviously. That's kind of You join things like this. Essentially. Okay, this is a bug in Blender, I think. It used to be an old bug that did this kind of stuff all the time. I think it's maybe I just screwed it up this time though. I'm gonna delete it. See what it gets rid of. Okay. That one to that one maybe. So before you know it, hopefully, you can select all this on the outside. You still have to do the old select faces on the inside thing. Like loops, boundary loop. Now you can control B and bevel. You can see some of this stuff just acts weird or behaves badly. Loop slide a lot of times causes it. Turn that off. Could help out a little bit. Sometimes you want loop slide on, sometimes you want to off. I'm gonna actually knife cut this one. The manual cleanup, not that fun. Not with these kinds of shapes in here. I'd prefer doing this at a low resolution, subdivided in a way. Whatever, but still doable, but you can't really subdivide this necessarily. Unless you, like, this should be a flat face, technically, I think. If I like a flatten here, you'll see it doesn't change. Loop tools flatten. Loop tools is an add on you can enable, by the way. I didn't mention that, but uh, ES, 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 merge center. Because flat faces, you can do stuff like that. So if this was subdivided, that would be fine there. This one, not so much. Over here, ES, ES. Boom. Close to a subdivision? Yeah, not too bad. So, subsequently, Boolean cleanup is also. Kind of when you're going to do uh, subdivisions as well. Excuse me. Con this is more or less similar to how you would convert to a subdivision. You can see it's quite simple to get these going in this direction. I think I might dissolve that one. All you have to do is like connect the dots, pressing J. Sometimes you have to kind of dissolve things. You can still use triangles. Not a big deal. Especially if you're just making a mesh you're going to bake on. This isn't going to be at all. Not sure what happened right here. How this one ended up right over there. Needs to be um, a bit closer to this edge. You like the triangle there in the corner. Knife tools can also be useful if I cut right to that vertex. Don't want to accidentally miss it. I have to go resolve it again. Little pull, right? And sometimes it's better just to get rid of, if possible. In spacing here in the middle, was that little thing, right? I'm gonna pull this out. I guess to right here, and let it just turn into a e pole. I don't know. It's really kind of not a reason to do it like this, like that. Put that one down. Same here. See these kinds of things. A lot of times you can just gg twice and slide down. I don't want to spend all day snapping all those or moving all those. I'm trying to see why it existed though. But I really, now that I think about it, it's because it's holding this edge up here a little bit. So if that was the case, and you wanted to keep it, you could take all the ones below it, technically, and kind of pull them up, perhaps. But in reality, we're better off just um, you're doing like a redirect here. Like that. 
Yeah. So redirects are quarter insets, right? You were to cut a um, an inset into four pieces down the middle. Two two cuts down the middle, one on the X, one on the Y. You would end up this would be a quarter. Not gonna use these are like real simple things to back around. Sometimes they loop the wrong way. Anyways, so yeah, there you go. Can you do Boolean cleanups? Is it hard? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the shape, really. Like if it's going to be harder than, like some are harder than others, obviously. Um, sometimes it's not a big deal, really. Right here, join there, dissolve there. That's a quad. Subdivide that. Voila. And clean up, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed watching at least. Try to make it as fast as I could, but it still takes a little while, right? To do, especially different shapes or multiple shapes, you know. But I'll check you guys out in the next one and uh, take care, all right?